how exactly do you go about closing an angel round of investment? Well, there are quite a few steps involved, 17 to be precise, and we'll walk through those one by one in today's video. Hi, I'm Steve Morris, and I use this Startup SOS YouTube channel to provide practical how-to advice for first-time entrepreneurs. Yes, 17 steps. There is quite a lot involved in getting ready for and then closing an angel round of investment. Now, many of these steps would be a workshop all by themselves. I am working on a more detailed, more in-depth training a program to go through this whole cycle in a lot more depth. If you're interested in that, use the link in the notes to put your name on the list and I'll get in touch when we're ready to take that training into beta test. But for now, we're going to run through these 17 steps from beginning to end to give you a pretty thorough overview of the process. Now we're going to assume that you've already put together a funding plan. We talked about that in a previous video. You might check that out if you haven't uh, seen it yet. But the idea is the funding plan outlines a series of fundable milestones that you will go through to fund and grow your company. In the example we used, it starts with the founders using their savings uh, to do customer discovery so that they could get the credibility they need to pitch friends and family for the $50,000 that they needed to build a prototype based on building the prototype and getting some customer feedback, hopefully positive uh, on that, they believe then they'll have the credibility to go pitch angels for $200,000 to do a more complete beta test level product and to roll that out and get some more detailed feedback from customers. That's the milestone we'll start with in this example of going through the whole funding cycle. And here you go, the overview of all 17 steps in the cycle. Now this is represented in a circle because you know, the process keeps repeating. You typically raise multiple rounds when you're funding a growth company and you'll go through the cycle for each round and sometimes it feels like it never ends. It finally does end once the company gets bought or you do a public offering which is of course the ultimate funding strategy. We're assuming that now you've completed the milestone of having developed a prototype with funding from friends and family. You've gotten some feedback from uh, customers and that puts you, we hope, in a credible position to pitch angel investors. So that brings us to the next milestone, which is to develop an almost ready for production beta test version of your product so that you can then get more concrete feedback from customers so that you can tackle the next milestone, which would be a limited uh, rollout of your product. That's the milestone. Let's start with the next step. First, you're going to size the round. Now, you already in your funding plan made, call it an educated guess, you did some research, you developed a, an estimate of how much you thought the milestone would take. Well, now that you're face to face with that milestone, it's time to really dig in and do a more thorough job. In particular, to do a bottom up cash flow analysis, a projection of what exactly it'll cost to develop that uh, more beta test level product. Bottoms up means you're looking week to week, month to month, what do you actually have to do What's it going to cost you in people? What's it going to cost you in services? What's it going to cost you in terms of capital expenditures? Exactly how much will it cost to meet that milestone? And then you've had that number a little bit because estimates are notoriously optimistic. It'll probably take longer and cost more than you thought. And then you've had it a little bit more because once you hit that milestone, then the idea is you're ready to go ahead and raise funding for your next milestone where you have to have enough cash left over to get through that runway that it's going to take you, which is probably measured in months, to raise funding for your next milestone. So it's a little bit of an art form figuring out the size of a round, but that's a basic view of the process that you go through. Now that you've sized the round, the question is, where do you raise it from? Is it a reasonable amount for friends and family? Or is it more of an angel round size? Are you thinking about equity crowdfunding, either the national version with regulation crowdfunding or a state specific version of crowdfunding? 
what approach are you looking at? Well, in our funding plan, we thought $200,000 angels would be a reasonable source for that kind of funding. So that's the plan for this example. And the next question then, of course, is which SEC exemption would you plan to use? We covered those in an earlier video. The next question is, what kind of an investment instrument will you use? The most common options for this stage would be a convertible note, a pre-money safe, uh, a post money safe, or possibly a priced round, although those get a little more expensive uh, in terms of the legal fees. We covered each of these in an earlier series of videos on early stage funding for startups. Depending on which investment instrument you use, that'll determine what kinds of terms need to go into the offer that you're going to make. If it's a convertible note or a safe, either pre-money or post-money, then there'll probably be a cap and a discount. If it's a convertible note, there'll be an interest rate and a maturity date you have to uh, choose. Uh, all of the above could involve a pro rata uh, agreement that allows investors to maintain uh, their percent ownership in the next round. And if you're looking at more of a priced round or a post money safe, well, then you're looking at doing a valuation. And uh, if you're doing a price round in particular, then you're probably going to get into things like liquidity rights and a whole lot of other uh, terms that you'll need to cover in your offer. And now you come to the question. Does this all look feasible? Given the headway you've made, given what your advisors are telling you, do you believe you have access to the source you've identified? So in our example, angel investors, have we made enough headway? Okay, we think so. We've got a prototype, we've got some customer feedback. Um, that's a significant amount of headway. Can the source you're looking at fund the amount of money that you want to raise? $200,000, angels, certainly a reasonable number for angels to fund. Now, is your offer credible? Are you asking for, say, a cap and a discount that are consistent with caps and discounts that are typically seen in your local market, assuming you're talking about a, a convertible note or a safe? Again, you test that by talking to people, maybe other entrepreneurs and potentially even investors in your local market. And then finally, how about the dilution? If you're looking at a post money safe or a priced round, then you can take a look at uh, the dilution that's going to be involved in closing this round and ask, you know, are you selling a reasonable amount of the company or is it a pretty high percentage that maybe you should back up and, uh, and rethink that? So if you decide for whatever reason it's not a feasible deal, then you back up and rethink the whole process. You might want to identify a smaller interim milestone as long as it's still fundable. Uh, one that's maybe easier to fund. And then you would take a look at the size of that and figure out what the source might be where you could uh, raise that, choose an instrument and, uh, and develop a new offer. So the idea is you go through this cycle until you're pretty sure you have something that's feasible, that's acceptable. So you have something that you can actually pitch out there in the investment community. What's in a pitch pack? Well, that's the pitch deck, which by itself includes a lot of things. Here you're going to talk about the size of your market opportunity. You'll talk about your go-to-market strategy. You'll talk about your competition and how you're different and better for your target segments. You'll talk about how you're gonna protect your intellectual property and do a high level summary of your financial pro projections. So there's a lot of work that goes just into the pitch deck. Now, together with that, you'll typically need some more detailed financial projections so the investor can take a look at your bottom up assumptions and how you got to your numbers, looking at, you know, typically what would be five year financial projections. And then finally, there'll be a due diligence package. The later the stage, the more money you're raising the more detailed the due diligence will be. In an early stage deal, like a couple hundred thousand dollars from angels, it'll be relatively lighter due diligence, but there still will be some, and you will need to pull together a due diligence package to be prepared for that. And of course, if you're going to raise money from investors, you'll need the legal documents ready for them to sign. Whether that's a convertible note document or a safe document, there may be a pro rata side letter uh, involved. And of course, if it's a, a priced round, there's even a lot more documents involved to prepare for that investment round. 
Okay, so you've figured out your offer, you've decided it's feasible, you've got your pitch packed together, and your legal documents are lined up. It's time to go start to pitch investors, whether those be friends and family, angels, venture capitalists, or strategic investors. So again, with our example, we're talking angel investors, so we're going to go out and start networking, you know, check out the local angel groups. And of course, every time we pitch, we're going to ask for introductions to other investors who might be interested in what we're doing. And this whole process of networking and pitching is a whole topic unto itself. In the process of raising money, very often you'll find that what you're doing is a series of trial closes. In other words, you're asking for a contingent commitment. Now, if you can just get somebody to, to write you that check right up front, that's great. Maybe you're, you're raising $200,000, you find someone who could maybe do 50,000. If they're confident enough to write that check, that's great. Often, they'll be a little hesitant because they're worried, okay, I could write 50,000, but if you can't raise the full 200,000, you can't accomplish your milestone and my money, frankly, would be wasted. So, Often there's this process of saying, well, look, will you commit to 50K as long as I can line up the other 150K, kind of a, a trial close. And that's, again, a very, very common kind of way to proceed in a round. So you're really doing this soft circle. In other words, getting these verbal commitments for each individual investor in the round and then trying to close them. Before anything gets closed, there'll be a certain amount of due diligence that happens. Uh, investors may want to look at all of your various contracts. Uh, they may want to look at your corporate documents to see how you're structured, maybe uh, resumes of the founders. Again, the, the later stage you're looking, the more due diligence there is, but it makes sense to at least put together a basic pack of due diligence material, or you'll be scrambling a lot to respond to questions that investors have. Now, assuming the due diligence goes well, there's a good chance that there may be an escrow involved in you finally getting things closed. The idea with an escrow is it's just a follow-up of this idea of the, the soft circle and getting people to do a contingent commitment. One way to really protect an investor is to say, okay, look, put in your, let's say it's 50,000 of the 200K, but it'll go into escrow in an escrow, escrow account with our law firm and we don't get anything, any of that money, until we've got all $200,000 in escrow. That protects the investor, saying that you know their money isn't going to get, to get to the company until the full round is committed. Again, not necessarily something that you'll have to do, but sometimes that's what it takes to actually get the commitment from people. In which case, yeah, you, you close enough investors to get to, in this case, the 200K, and then you get the money. Eventually, you'll get to your first close with a little bit of luck. That's not a bad time to do your SEC filing. Depending on which exemption you're using, you may or may not have to do a filing, but if you're doing a traditional angel round under Rule 5B, well, yeah, then you will do a filing. We talked about those exemptions in a previous video. And then you finish off the round and finally get, with a little luck, the $200,000. And then the real work, which is meeting the milestone. In this case, that was developing a beta test ready product and getting that out in front of customers and getting their feedback, getting a lot more substantive feedback than you got from the prototype stage. And we did that specifically so it would put us in a good position to raise the money to accomplish the next milestone, which from the funding plan was going to be a limited rollout of the product, not a nationwide rollout, but a limited market test of the product. And from the funding plan, that was estimated to be a million dollars because it's some product development, but also some marketing, and it wasn't going to be cheap. So we're now ready to tackle that next milestone and the whole process repeats one more time. So I hope that gives you a better feel for the steps that are involved in actually closing an angel round. Uh, yes, 17 steps, the way I've divvied them up. Uh, and one interesting thing about fundraising you'll find, as is implied by this circular nature, it feels like it never ends. Uh, and it doesn't ever end until you get bought. At least that's the positive 
uh, into it. So it is a lot of work. It's it feels like a full time job for the CEO, and the challenge is you have this other job of running the company, and that's just the challenge of being an entrepreneur. The other thing to keep in mind for a round of funding is that a round is never done until the dollars actually deposit in your account, because up to then, everything and anything can go wrong uh, and uh, and screw up the, uh, the round. So it's actually good to be a little bit paranoid, to be really focused on getting the money in the bank. Uh, a, a verbal commitment doesn't get you there. Even a written commitment doesn't even necessarily get you there. Money in the bank, that's what counts. Those are the 17 steps involved to close an angel funding round. If you'd be interested in a more in-depth training course to go through all 17 steps in a lot more depth, use the link to the form to let me know and I'll give you a notification when that is available for a beta test. A beta test will be a good deal. If this was helpful, please click the like button and pass it along to other entrepreneurs who might benefit uh, from it. Any questions or comments, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section. This video is part of a series on funding strategy. There's a link to the playlist for that right here. And that is a wrap for this video on the 17 steps to close an angel funding round. Thank you very much for watching.